Hello students, uh, this is my video lecture on the poem Know Then Thyself by Alexander Pope and this is a video lecture which will cover the entire poem and along with it we are going to discuss the background because this poem has a very interesting background and also all the poetic devices that are involved in it. So let us begin with the poem. So, as you can see in front of you, this is the text of the poem. But before we uh, continue with the text, let us first uh, know something about the background of the poem. So, as far as the uh, poem is concerned, it is an extract. It is not a complete poem. If you would remember, in the previous poem also, uh, the poem uh, titled Shadwell, uh, John Dryden had uh, written a, a longer poem uh, and uh, which was titled MacFleckno and the, the extract which had been taken were, was of a few lines. So uh, similarly in this poem also, uh, the, uh, this poem is an extract from a longer poem written by Alexander Pope which was titled an essay on man. Please don't get confused by the title of the poem. It is the title says essay but this is a poem. This is not an essay. So the title of the poem was an essay on man. An essay on man it basically consisted of epistle 1 to 4. So, four epistles were written and epistle is basically a letter. So, an epistle is a letter. So, it is as if Alexander Pope was writing a letter and there were about four of them. There were four and if you would just consider all the four together, it made this poem titled an essay on man and the present lines which we are doing which have been titled know then thyself it is taken from episode 2 it is taken from episode 2 of the poem the major theme that, uh, that alexander pope dealt with when he was doing this poem was the theme of the theme of whatever is whatever is is right or you can say that whatever god does is justified जो है वो अच्छे के लिए है और जो भगवान करता है वो ठीक ही करता है उसमें कोई ना कोई जस्टिस ही रहता है भगवान किसी के साथ इनजस्टिस नहीं करता सो दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट थीम दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट थिंग दैट द द पोएट वांटेड टू कन्वे इन दिस पोएम दैट ही हैड रिटन एंड दीस पार्ट्स दीस लाइंस व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस पोएम नो देन थाईसेल्फ इन दीस लाइंस द पोएट बेसिकली and I am just removing these from here. So, what exactly does he want to convey with these lines that we are going to cover in these in this poem? He is trying to convey to emphasize man as being in a middle state. man as being in a middle state which means higher than beasts and lower than gods so man is in a middle state this i think this you this term you must remember because 
uh, when you will do this poem this is something this middle state is something which is going to be repeated so many times jaise hi hum ye poem karenge bar bar iska zikr aayega and you must remember this and now we'll, let us begin with the uh, text of the poem itself and let us just make some space now so the text reads know then thyself presume not god to scan and uh, i am going to read two lines together i am going to read two lines together because if you can see here scan and man state and great side and pride if you see the rhyme scheme so what kind of rhyme scheme is the poet following in this poem it is rhyming couplets rhyming couplets so the uh, poet is using them because this is written in uh, in uh, in that uh, epic formation where a uh, pair of lines couplet means two lines so two lines rhyme with each other and basically they also complete the meaning uh, if we read two lines together only then the meaning is completed so that is why we are going to read these two lines together so this is the rhyme scheme of uh, uh, the poem and let us uh, read two first two lines together and the poet says know then thyself presume not god to scan the proper study of mankind is man in this first line let us first write down the meaning presume not god to scan what does the poet mean he means to say do not try to presume not means do not try to and scan means study study or explore god so he says who are you who is man but to know thyself so he is telling man to know himself try to understand no means try to understand thyself means your own self who is he talking to he is talking to man man should try to understand himself only and not do not be so arrogant as to believe that you are capable of judging god and the universe created by him who has created the universe of course it is god who has created the universe and the poet says know then thyself pehle apne aap ko to samajh lo he kisko keh raha he is telling man that first try to understand yourself man should try to uh, to make sense of his own existence and not try to study or explore god because that would be arrogance wo to ghamand ho gaya wo to apni samajhdari pe ghamand hai ki hum bhagwan aur uske banaye hue universe ko samajhne ki koshish kar rahe hain aur apne aap ko pehchanne ki koshish nahi kar rahe and he adds by saying the proper study of mankind is man and he says if you study your own self hum apne aap ko hi samajh le हम पूरी मैन काइंड को समझ जाएंगे हेयर मैन मीन्स वन ओन सेल्फ ओके एंड प्रॉपर स्टडी मीन्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द मैन काइंड द होल ऑफ मैन काइंड विच मैन हैज क्रिएटेड try to understand your own self first pehle apne aap ko to samajh lo and then uh, these are very beautiful lines where he says i am reading line number 3 and line number 4 together where he says placed on the isthmus and please note down that these are called isthmus the th th is silent so how will you pronounce pronounce it it will be like this isthmus and not isthmus no we are going to pronounce it isthmus and for and then we must also know what is the meaning of is so i have just removed all the notations here so that we have more space to write so i was talking about the word isthmus 
and what is the meaning of it so the word isthmus itself means a middle state middle state you can call it uh, you can call it confusion you can call it in between okay so this is the middle state and this is a word which is uh, uh, which is used to describe the state of man what is the exact state of man he is in the state of isthmus and he says placed on this isthmus of a middle state he is a being he the, so the poet is talking of man as darkly wise and rudely great so first of all this line is important because basically it talks of the whole theme of the poem itself and then and then we must focus on these two terms which the poet has used the term is darkly wise and rude, rudely great and please note down that they are very important and they are called oxymorons so this is a poetic device which the poet has used he has used oxymorons what is the meaning of oxymorons where two opposite meaning words are written together opposite meaning words are written together they are called oxymorons and they are important oxymorons are important because that this is how the poet is trying to tell us that man himself is always in a state of paradox man himself is always in a muddled state i hope you understand muddle muddle confusion isthmus they are all paradox they all mean the same thing that man is always confused it it basically talks of the confusion of man's state because he does not himself know what is his real position use apni samajh nahi hai वो हमेशा एक कंफ्यूज और मिडिल स्टेट में रहता है और ऑक्सीमोरॉन्स जो है वो उस स्टेट को डिफाइन करने का बड़ा अच्छा तरीका है इसीलिए पोएट इस पोइटिक डिवाइस को यूज कर रहा है और अब हमें वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दीज टू टर्म्स दैट वी हैव ही हैज यूज एंड व्हाई डू वी कॉल देम ऑक्सीमोरॉन इनको हम दो ऑपोजिट मीनिंग वर्ड क्यों कह रहे हैं एंड लेट इस मेक सम स्पेस हेयर so the uh, the first term that the poet has used is darkly wise and please try to understand that uh, he is uh, using the term dark for ignorance uh just like we we say that andhere ka matlab hota hai agyanta so darkness is basically uh, similar to ignorance so dark is ignorance and wise of course wise means wisdom or intelligence so what can we say so the poet means to say that man is a mixture of ignorance and wisdom to uske andar agyanta aur gyan dono hi mix hai hum ye nahi keh sakte ki insaan sirf ignorant hai क्योंकि वो समझदार भी है पर वो सिर्फ समझदार है ऐसा नहीं है क्योंकि वो बहुत सारी अज्ञानता भी उसके अंदर भरी हुई है एंड देन कम्स द सेकंड टर्म वेर ही से इज रूडली ग्रेट सो बीइंग रूड मींस बीइंग अनसिविलाइज्ड लेट मी जस्ट राइट दिस अगेन uncivilized so he is uncivilized but at the same time he is great greatness here means being civilized well mannered kind having a, a being a, a being a great can be having all the qualities and being rude can be having all the disqualities of a human being so what is man can you just call man uncivilized rude uh, uh, you know cruel no man is also civilized and has all the qualities of a human being so he is an amalgamation he is a confusion 
यू कैन कॉल एम अ मिक्सचर तो इंसान जो है वो अज्ञानता और ज्ञान का मिक्सचर है तो कभी कभी कठोरता और ममता का मिक्सचर है उसमें वो इंसान वाली सारी क्वालिटीज भी हैं पर साथ ही साथ जानवरों वाली सारी क्वालिटीज भी हैं तो वो है क्या ये वो खुद ही समझ नहीं पाता है एंड देन दीज लास्ट टू लाइंस ऑफ दिस स्लाइड वेयर दिस इज लाइन नंबर फाइव एंड सिक्स आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू रब दिस He says, with too much knowledge for the skeptic side, with too much weakness for the stoic pride. Now I must write the meaning first of all. When the poet says too much knowledge, you know what knowledge is, but you must know what is the meaning of a skeptic. So a skeptic is a person who doubts. He has a lot of doubts in his mind. He is never sure. of what he really wants and then uh, we have uh, this word weakness and here weakness is desires desires ichhaye jo insaan ko kamzor banati hain these are the desires which make man weak and then he talks of a stoic stoic is a person who is very satisfied he has a satisfied nature he is a satisfied man with no desires okay so if you have somebody who has knowledge knowledge clears all doubts so you would have no doubts in your mind you would have no confusions in your minds if you have knowledge but on the other hand man is somebody who is full of doubts and who is never sure about what he is going to do uska man jo hai ashant rehta hai और उसके मन में हमेशा सवाल ही खड़े रहते हैं शक रहते हैं कि पता नहीं जो वो कर रहा है वो ठीक कर रहा है या नहीं कर रहा है तो अगर उस अपर क्या इंसान में नॉलेज नहीं है नो वी कैन नॉट से दैट सो मैन हैज नॉलेज बट समाइम्स द इवन दैट टू मच ऑफ नॉलेज इवन दैट एक्सेस ऑफ नॉलेज कैन नॉट क्लियर हिज डाउट फिर भी उसका मन जो है वो शंकाओं से भरा रहता है so definitely it is again refers to the confused state of man it refers to how confused or mixed state in which man is and then the last line with too much weakness for the stoic pride man is is made up of desires insaan aisa hai jiski ichhaye khatam nahi hoti hai पर साथ ही साथ आपको ऐसे लोग भी मिल जाते हैं जो जिंदगी से बहुत ही सेटिस्फाइड है तो क्या करे इंसान वो अपनी इच्छाओं को कैसे दबाए ताकि वो स्टोइक बन पाए ठीक है वो स्टोइक बनना चाहता है लेकिन उसकी वीकनेस बहुत ज्यादा है उसकी डिजायर्स बहुत ज्यादा है सो ऑल दीज डेफिनेटली टेक अस टू दिस वन वर्ड विच इज इसमस मैन इज इन अ स्टेट ऑफ इसमस और कंफ्यूजन and the poet continues by saying he hangs between now he of course he is talking of man in general and he talks of man hanging in between again we are reminded of the word ismas and it is that hugely paradoxical and confusing state you can say that man has so many contradictory qualities contradictory means they are opposite to each other to pehle poet ne kaha ki wo intelligent to hai lekin uske man mein phir bhi doubt rehte hain wo stoic banna chahta hai par wo apni desires ko ichhaon ko nahi khatam kar pata wo uh, uh, ek aisa vyakti hai jiske dimag mein andhera hai लेकिन साथ ही साथ उसके पास विजडम भी बहुत है तो एक तरह से ये एक बहुत ही कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट्री क्वालिटीज जो इंसान के अंदर होती हैं हमने पहले वर्ड ऑक्सीमोरॉन भी यूज किया था उसके लिए तो ही सेज ही हैंग्स बिटवीन इन डाउट टू एक्ट और रेस्ट नाउ दीज टू वर्ड्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू एक्ट और रेस्ट सो द पोएट विशेज टू से that man is confused whether whether he should live a life of action or 
relaxation and this is something you must have seen around you also that some people uh, live their life in activity which means that they have so many things to do they are always occupied they will not rest at all and they are so active while on the other hand there are people who live a very relaxed life and really it is a big question what kind of a life one man is supposed to live kaisi zindagi achhi hai aaram se ji jaye ya fir bahut kuch karke ji jaye ye decide karna apne aap mein hi mushkil hai and then in the next line he says uh, in doubt to deem himself a god or a beast ye cheez i had explained this god and beast phenomena to you even uh, uh, when i had introduced the poem where the poet was trying to say that uh, you know the basic theme of the poem is man is neither god nor animal what is a beast beast is an animal but he has qualities of both god and animal aapko aise insaan bhi mil jayenge jo bilkul janwaron jaise ho unme bahut sari disqualities ho but then there are people who are who can be called equivalent to god wo bhagwan jaise hote hain and deem here this word that he has used deem means to judge he does not know how to judge himself can he call himself a god or a beast and then again in the next two lines he says in doubt his mind or body to prefer so now this confusion of mind and body is this is not a new question man has been faced with with this question for so long ki insaan apna ka sharir aur atma iske beech ka jo confusion rehta hai mind is the soul and body is obviously his physical self what why is he living is he living for his soul or is he living for his physical self he is confused in that uh, uh, the the confusion the muddle of the soul and the body his body demands something his soul demands something else some people live for their soul and some live for their bodily pleasures and this is the confusion that he is faced with and this is the confusion which obviously every man uh, must face he is born god has given him a life but god has also decided that he must die man's mortality हम अमर नहीं है हमारा जीवन जो है वो कभी ना कभी खत्म जरूर होगा वेन अ पर्सन इज बॉर्न इमीडिएटली हिज डेथ इज डिसाइडेड एंड रीजनिंग बट टू एयर मैन हैज बीन गिवन द ब्रेन अब ऑल क्रीचर्स no animal no other creature has been given the kind of brains that man, that god has been uh, had has gifted us man has been gifted by god and yet and yet the poet says that despite all his knowledge and wisdom he makes errors errors means he makes mistakes so error means to make errors so itna dimag bhagwan ne hame diya hai lekin usne hame kabhi bhi galtiyon se upar nahi uthaya bahut baar aapne suna hoga insaan galtiyon ka putla hai kehne ka matlab hai ki itna dimag hote hue bhi hum itni galtiyan karte hain to aise dimag ka fayda hi kya hai par agar hamare paas wo dimag na ho to insaan insaan hi nahi hai so he is just a uh, in uh, in this kind of a situation a conflicting situation you can say when he is born his death is decided when he reasons when he uses his brains the error is decided ki wo galti karega hi theek hai and then he says uh, and i am again using this space when he says alike in ignorance his reason such whether he thinks too little or too much 
सो वॉट ए ब्यूटिफुल वे ऑफ से इंसान कम सोचे या ज्यादा बहुत सोच समझ के फैसला करे या एकदम से इंस्टेंटली इंस्टेंटेनियसली फैसला करे पर उससे कोई ना कोई गलती हो ही जाती है कभी कभी समझ में नहीं आता कि बहुत सोच समझ के फैसला करना चाहिए या झट से फैसला कर देना चाहिए क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली गलती तो हमसे हो ही जानी है सो ही सेज अलाइक इन इग्नोरेंस अलाइक मीन सेम इवन इफ मैन इज इग्नोरेंट सेम इन अ स्टेट ऑफ इग्नोरेंस एंड इवन इफ मैन इज नॉलेजेबल and wise he says they are both the same man who is ignorant and man who is knowledgeable both are the same why because he might think too little or too much okay so some decisions are quick and instantaneous and some decisions are thought discussed deliberated and still both of these decisions might lead to errors kabhi kabhi jhat se liya hua decision theek ho jata hai bahut soch samajh ke lo to galti ho jati hai kabhi kabhi bahut zyada सोच समझ के लो तो ठीक हो जाता है जल्दी से ले लो तो गलती हो जाती है बट दिस काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन इज ओनली इन द केस ऑफ मैन एंड नो अदर क्रीचर एंड देन कमिंग ऑन टू द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द पोएम द पोएट से इज क्योस of thought and passion all confused at least this word that the poet has used it's a beautiful word he calls the state of man a chaos chaos means where everything is disorganized jise hindi mein uthal puthal kehte hain everything is in a state of confusion nothing is in its proper place इस तरह की जो स्टेट है वो क्योस कहलाती है और मैन का जो स्टेट है इट इज अस ऑफ थॉट एंड पैशन सी हाउ नाइसली ही हैज यूज दीज टू वर्ड थॉट एंड पैशन थॉट कैन बी कॉल्ड इफ आई आई यूज दिस वर्ड हेयर थॉट सो द मीनिंग ऑफ थॉट कैन बी so intelligence or brain the meaning of passion can be emotions or heart so there is also a fight between the brain and the heart dimag kuch kehta hai dil kuch kehta hai and man becomes confused still by himself abused or disabused so here first let me write down the meaning of abused and disabused so that you uh, it is easy for you to understand abuse means to follow so if you are following the wrong path or if you are following the righteous path it is your own decision own so still by himself so you abuse yourself or you uh, follow a righteous path this will be your own decision nobody else is responsible for what you do created half to rise and half to fall great lord of all things and yet a prey to all so here half to rise means man has been given qualities that can make him rise to the level of god and fall man has been given weaknesses that lower him 
to the level of a beast तो इंसान में इतनी क्वालिटीज हैं कि वो भगवान के बराबर अपने आप को उठा सकता है पर इतनी डिसक्वालिटीज भी है इतनी वीकनेसेस हैं कि वो जानवर की तरह अपने आप को गिरा सकता है ही इज हाफ टू राइज एंड हाफ टू फॉल ग्रेट लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल थिंग्स वाई हैव वी कॉल्ड मैन ग्रेट लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल थिंग्स ही इज द मोस्ट इंटेलिजेंट of all creatures so his body his mind makes him the lord and yet a prey to all but his body is weak his mind is the strongest but his body is the weakest insaan ki body to aisi hai ki ek virus bhi ek bacteria bhi use khatam kar sakta hai kisi janwar ke samne to insaan kya hi cheez hai so as far as the mind is concerned we are the greatest but as far as the body is concerned we are the weakest this is the uh, the the this is the weaker point of uh, man that his body is very weak and we are a prey to all और यहां पर जो प्रे वर्ड लिखा है प्रे का मतलब होता है विक्टिम या जिसे शिकार भी कह सकते हैं हम हिंदी में तो इंसान की बॉडी इतनी वीक है कि वो किसी का भी शिकार हो सकता है एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन दैट द पोएट हैज रिजर्व फॉर द लास्ट जो आखिरी का कपलेट है वो काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है और उसका मीनिंग हम यहाँ पर लिखने वाले हैं सो द पोएट से सोल जज ऑफ ऑल soul judge of truth in endless error heard man is the soul means only man is the only creature which can differentiate between truth and falsity between right and wrong we can differentiate which means we can judge so we are the only creature who have the judgment who have the mind or the brain to judge in endless error heard and yet we are surrounded by mistakes so despite the mind and the brain we are surrounded by mistakes and then he says the glory jest and riddle of the world and see how he describes man state in three words teen shabdon ka wo istemal karta hai aur wo kehta hai glory jest and riddle of the world glory ka matlab hota hai shaan तो हम इस पूरी दुनिया की शान है क्योंकि मैन इज मेड टू बी द स्ट्रोंगेस्ट एंड द मोस्ट ब्रिलियंट क्रीचर सो वी आर द ब्रिलियंस ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वी आर ऑल्सो द जेस्ट जेस्ट मीन्स अ जोक हम पूरी दुनिया में एक मजाक की तरह है एंड ड्रिडल मीन्स अ puzzle so for the world we are the brilliant creatures we are the joke and the puzzle because we are the only creature who is blessed with brains and yet we make mistakes we are the only creatures who are blessed with a body and a heart and a soul and a mind which all have their own functions and we get confused in all of them and we are unable to understand ourselves तो इस पूरी पोयम में इन द होल पोयम द पोएट बेसिकली अगेन एंड अगेन स्ट्रेस इज द फैक्ट दैट मैन इज अ डिफिकल्ट क्रीचर टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड द मोर ही ट्राइज टू अंडरस्टैंड हिमसेल्फ द मोर कंफ्यूज ही गेट्स एंड लेट अ लोन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द वेज ऑफ गॉड भगवान को समझना तो बहुत ही दूर की बात है वो अपने आप को समझ ले वो ही बहुत बड़ी बात है सो आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द पोएम and the kind of uh, theme that the poet has tried to instill in these lines um and i will see you in my next poem thank you very much